there was this thing about amnesty. And I was one of the people who said, I'm not applying for amnesty. I didn't do anything wrong. And um, amnesty from somebody like the clerk, I just will not do it. A number of us refused to apply for amnesty on political basis. Some did, some didn't. That was an individual choice. The ANC never forced us. When we went to the TRC, we did say we accepted responsibility as the leadership for anything done in the name of the ANC. So we claimed responsibility even if someone else took the action. On a, Overall, we didn't claim amnesty for any individual act. So that was policy. Now, when we were coming back and as we were landing, I remember sitting next to somebody else and holding hands and wondering what was going to happen. I don't think we were afraid, but already people had come back. And some of the lawyers were saying, you watch it, we're not going to get you out of prison if they lock you up. But we were not really worried about that. And, uh, but it was some concern. We didn't know what we were going to find. We theoretically knew what was happening in South Africa, but practically we didn't know. So there was concern, not for oneself, but concern for the unknown, let me put it that way. Most of us didn't trust the National Party government or the clerk. And so there was a lot of concern of that, not so much for personal reasons, but for what sort of position are we going into. I was immediately conscripted into setting up the Women's League again, reviving it. Before I knew it, I was part of Mandela's secretariat. I was anxious to set up the research department. <laughs> and this was a constant problem. And I kept saying, we will need the research department here if we are going to negotiate. So anyway, I was doing both things in the sense, setting up, but I didn't spend a lot of time in his secretariat. I was there for meetings, things like that. But much more as the negotiations went on, preparing for the negotiations. At the women's end, we were setting up the Women's National Coalition. We managed to set it up as the most representative body until the parliament was elected, because every political party was there. It was a coalition. We took a decision as women, we are not setting up one women's movement. Let people keep their, it'll be less threatening. But let us, and our question was simply, what change is coming? What change do we as women want? And we then put up a Canadian funded largest participatory research program that at least they told us was there, where we put up big news sheets outside supermarkets, come and write what you want changed. We asked the churches. Now it was strange that because of South Africa's apartheid and thing, people, women, domestic workers did not have weekends off. But the mothers' unions used to meet on Thursdays the churches. So we asked the churches on three consecutive weeks, please ask the Mother's Union meetings what it, to write down what it is they want changed as women, you know, how it affects them. And we got these thousands of replies and this was all put together into a women's charter. So that was something I was very much involved in as well. So I was doing a whole range of things and too busy to be too worried about what was going to happen. But we were convinced that once there were negotiations, there was no argument that could be made. And this was true because our teams were all sorts of people. 